Two and a half years ago, I tested several photo editing programs for users looking for an alternative to the monthly subscription for Lightroom and Photoshop. I was so impressed by Luminar Neo that I adopted it as a my go-to program for image post-processing and photo and video management. Skyrim has been constantly adding new interesting features and improving existing ones, so it is time for a new overview of this program. Luminar Neo is extremely rich in functionalities, it would be impossible to explore them all in one video, so I will focus on the new ones and the one I use the most. Luminar Neo can be bought as a monthly subscription with a 30-day money-back guarantee or as a perpetual license with a one-time payment. It works as a standalone app for Windows or Mac OS or as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. You will find all price info in the description of this video together with a discount coupon. It is an affiliate link, so I get a small commission in case of purchase. Like Lightroom, Luminar Neo has database management capabilities for photos and videos. This is crucial for users with a large collection of media. A couple of years ago, the catalog was not as powerful as the one in Lightroom, but it has been improved. It is possible to import a large number of images from a hard drive, maintaining the same structure of folder and subfolders. When adding a new subfolder or moving images from one to another, the changes made are also applied to the hard drive. It is possible to have more than one catalog, which can be useful to separate different activities, for example, professional images from personal ones. It supports albums to temporary group images without modifying their position in the folders. Very handy when working on a specific project. At the top in the middle, we select the catalog tab. To the right, we find a series of tools divided into generative, merge, and resolution enhancement. The first one is Generase to remove unwanted elements in an image, filling the gap using artificial intelligence to match the texture and elements from the surrounding area. In this image, there are three areas I would like to get rid of. With the image selected, I click on Generase to open this window, containing a series of tools at the bottom. Next to the icon Generase, there is a circle with an eye. Clicking on it, a description of the tool appears. We can click on Learn More to access a full tutorial about it on Luminar Knowledge Hub. These tutorials are available for most tools in Luminar. I find them very useful. After tapping on the tab Select, we can modify the size of the brush, select the items to delete, and after tapping on Erase, the areas are gone. GenSwap inserts artificial intelligence generated elements in a specific area. After drawing the destination area, some text describing the desired element must be entered. Let's try adding a cruise ship. It is good fun and can be useful on some occasion. GenExpand extends the boundary of an image horizontally or vertically, filling the space, integrating with the surrounding area. It can be used, for example, for a photo taken in vertical format to be included in a project in landscape orientation. Further down, we can merge several images in HDR, which is useful in high dynamic range situations. Here we have seven shots of the same photo taken at different exposure values using the HDR mode with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I select them and drag them to HDR Merge. Several settings are available for alignment, distortion, chromatic aberration and ghost reduction. Using Batch Merge, it is possible to load up to 100 images to be processed at once. The program will recognize and group the ones belonging to each scene.
Panorama stitching works similarly to merge to HDR by selecting the image and dragging them to the panorama window. Some options like the vignette distortion correction and chromatic aberration reduction can be selected. After clicking on Start, a second window shows several options for different projections spherical, cylindrical, mercator, plane, and fisheye. I suggest playing around with them to get used to the different results. Other options available here are focus stacking to combine several photos with different depth of field and upscale to enhance image resolution up to six times for deep crops or large prints. The image obtained by the merge and generative tools are saved in specific folders on the hard drive. To find the location, right-click on the image and select Show in Explorer. Luminia Neo has an impressive choice of editing tools, some of them based on artificial intelligence, for all sorts of adjustments. But it can also be used by beginners with a simple and intuitive workflow. Let's start from the simple possible workflow to enhance an image in only a few seconds. We start with a slight crop to get rid of some vignetting and a few distracting elements on the sides. I prefer to have the histogram on screen to fine-tune the exposure values. We can summon it on the main menu on the top left of the screen, selecting View and then Show Histogram. It will appear on the top right of the screen. Open in the Develop window, we find the new Auto Adjust tab. The program tries to apply the best exposure values. It is often a good starting point. In this case, I would add some smart contrast raise the shadows a bit, then adjust the black and white point. I would then open the color tab within Develop to adjust the white balance and add a touch of saturation. Let's check the result of this very basic grading by holding on to this icon on the bottom right below the image. We can also have a split before and after with the icon next to it. An alternative workflow for extra quick editing is using the tool Enhance. Let's go back to the original raw image after cropping. In Enhance, we find two sliders. Accent tries to find the best exposure, while Sky Enhance tries to improve the structure of the sky. Like we did before, we can then quickly fine tune the results in the Develop panel. This second method, starting from Enhance, often yields better results. The tab landscape contains four sliders. The haze increases contrast and saturation, and it is often useful to improve the sky structure. It's better used subtly, as it might lead to oversaturation. Golden Hour modified the white balance towards warmer tones. Foliage Enhance is used when the image contains vegetation. It is then possible to play around with the tint using the slider Foliage Hue. In this image, the sky is a bit dull. It would be interesting to add some clouds to increase the depth. In the tab Sky, we find all sorts of variations. Let's try this one. We can modify the position of the clouds, refine the mask, adjust the light reflected by the clouds, and add other effects. The new sky is a bit flat, so we can go back to the tab Enhance and use the Sky Enhancer slider. Now the image is more interesting. Color Harmony is a powerful tool for precise color control. It offers more options and is more intuitive than the color sliders in the Develop tab. We start by adjusting the overall brilliance and warmth. We can choose a specific hue to modify its contrast. The next tool controls the warmth of the warmest and coolest tone independently. 
The last one individually adjusts the color balance of the shadows, midtones and highlights. I find the first and last tabs particularly useful to adapt the image to a specific mood. With the tab Atmosphere we can add fog, layer fog, mist and haze. Each effect is controlled by three sliders, Amount, Depth and Lightness. Water Enhancer is another artificial intelligence tool. It detects bodies of water and creates a mask around them. We can then play around with different sliders affecting only the water. It is also possible to refine the mask. As you can see, now the sea pops up in the scene. Twilight Enhancer mimics the lighting and color effect of the golden and blue hours, near sunset or sunrise. There is a choice of five color schemes for different moods, golden, blush, emerald, mauve and blue. The major adjustments are made by using the two sliders, amount and exposure. Further down, five more menus for further refinements. Super Contrast is a very effective tool to control the contrast and the balance individually in the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. In this image, I can fine tune the structure of the sky by adjusting the values only for the highlights. Noiseless and Super Sharp are based on artificial intelligence and are both very effective. The Tab Creative offers plenty of tools to modify the colors and style of an image. The one I use the most is Relight for total control over the lighting of an image. There is also a series of tools for portraits. Most editing tools in Luminar Neo have a masking option to specify which part of the image will be affected. Several masking tools are available from the traditional brush, linear gradient and radial gradient to more advanced ones like color selection and the powerful luminosity mask for selection based on a specific luminosity range. It is also possible to select one or more objects in the scene. Like in Photoshop, layer can be used to separate elements of an image or to combine parts from different photos. <laughs> 